Hey Sierras, what's happening? It's Eliza here. Uh, it's been ages, but I'm here. So today I'm going to be showing you how to copy um, address fields from the contact or account record into an order in Sierra. Um, so as you all know, uh, the account and contact contains address fields that you populate. But if you use the orders in Sierra, it will not automatically um, create, sorry, um, pull through the address fields for you. So just to demonstrate. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm creating an order. So here's my order and notice that it's blank. So basically what um, I want to achieve is copying the address fields um, from the contact or the account into the order. How this has come about is um, just customers that I've worked with over the years, they use orders in CRM and um, they they are aware that when you create an order from scratch it's not going to pull through the address details and it can be a bit of admin work for an end user that has to manually type these um, addresses in the order. So there's, there's two methods that you can use um, using uh, out of the box functionality in CR 2013. Um, but the first one is what we call entity and attribute mapping. So in the contact record, here are um, address fields. And the address fields that I'm using in the contact for um, my physical address is address 1. And for my shipping, I'm using address 2 in the contact record. And what I'd like to do with this is the physical address details, so my address 1 fields, need to be mapped to the bill to fields in the order and my shipping address which is my address to fields in the contact need to be mapped to the ship to address. Um, so what am I talking about? It's these address fields that I've added onto the order. So I want, I want my address 1 fields to map to here and my address 2 fields in the contact or the account to map to here. So what you need to do is you need to go ahead and open up your um, solution or the customizations area into CRM. You need to head to the um, one-to-many relationships. So from the account, I'm going to make um, mappings from the account to the order. And this is the relationship record. And within the relationship record, um, it's going to give you the option to create a um, mapping of those fields. So just to break down, I'm creating the relationship, sorry, the mapping from the account record to the order. So this is what this indicates. Um, and then when I go into mappings, it's going to give me a list of fields that are mapped from the account to the order. By default, um, you're not going to have these address fields mapped, which is why I'm doing it, um, which is why I did it manually. So if I open this one up, sorry, I can't open it up. If I click on new, it's going to give me the options of fields that I can map. Um, you may notice a big gap in the middle between these two. I have no idea why this is. Um, if you're someone that works at Microsoft right now, maybe you can sort this out, but really it's a, it's a low impact. Um, so here's the ability to create a new um, mapping from a field in the account to the order. Now, there are limitations with field mapping. I will provide a post that will um, show you the MSDN um, web page that will list the constraints, but some of the ones that you need to know is if the type of the field is different from the source and the target, it's not going to work. So for example, if your field is type option set and in the target um, entity it's 
of two options that's going to fail because they both need to be the same. The other one is around um, single line of text where if, if you have a different format, so for example in the source entity it is text and then in the um, target entity it's a URL that's not going to work either. And then the other thing is if the characters, the, the limits, the length of the field is different, it's not going to work either. So for example this is 80 and this is 150. If you try and map those, that's not going to work. Um, once you do create your mapping, over on the right hand side, your target entity fields will reduce. So this will prevent you in selecting, um, reselecting fields when you're creating other mappings. And um, yeah, that's it. So once you create your mappings, you're pretty much good to go. So um, I created a mapping from address one street one to my build two line one, build two street one um, field in the order. And I did that for all the other fields in the contact. So I did this for both account and contact. So now if I go back to um, one of my contacts, so Aaron Rogers, um, for those of you who don't know Aaron Rogers, um, maybe Google it. <laughs> anyway, so here's the order and I'm going to create a new order from my contact. As soon as I click on add new order, it's going to open up a new order window and it's going to automatically pull through those address fields. So if I scroll down, um, I'm going to see them and ta-da, they are, they're here, so that's great. Um, so that's what mapping is. It helps you stream, streamline um, data entry when you're creating a record from within another record. So in this scenario, I'm creating an order from within a contact um, and because I've enabled mapping for account I can also create an order from account and it'll pull through the address um, details already. Now that's method one that is if you are creating an order from an account or from a contact but as I showed you earlier if you create an order just by itself it's not going to pull it through. And if you don't want to create an order from within an account or a contact, um, then um, there is another method, and this is what I'm going to show you next. So what I did was I um, I created two custom fields in the order, and I created workflows as well. So the two custom fields I created was copy account address and copy contact address. Um, the reason why I did that is this field over here, it's a lookup and you only have two entities to choose from, contact and account. One thing that I wasn't able to achieve in the workflow was put a condition around that. If the potential customer lookup field is equal to the account entity, then pull through the account address fields. Or if the lookup field um, is equal to the contact entity, then pull through the contact address field. That is something I wasn't able to do, and that is why I use these two custom fields. Um, so that way, if this is enabled and that is equal to an account, then it will pull through, and vice versa. If I click on this, it will then pull through the contact details from the address. So I achieve it by using um, this is very very simple um, workflow functionality. Um, I used a real-time workflow because that is new to CM2013 and it will automatically display the address fields as soon as that user hits the um, copy address, copy account address field. So that's what I've done here. I'm making sure that if they've enabled that copy account address field and the um, copy contact address equals no, then go ahead and update my address fields. So to do that, um, I just use the basic functionality where you can um, set the value on the order using um, that relationship to the account record. And once you do that, 
it turns yellow and you do that for all your azure fields in Sierra sorry on the order so you pretty much repeat it by creating another workflow for the contact um, it's basically the same it is it's just that those um, those fields in the contact workflow are obviously um, in relation to the contact entity whereas the one that I showed you was for accounts and to take it one step further um, I wanted to ensure that the end user didn't have both ticked at the same time or that they can't ever have both of those fields ticked so I created a business rule where if they've selected the copy account address then that has to be um, set to no and then vice versa for contact if they had selected copy contact address then the copy account address had to be set to back to no okay so just to demonstrate here's my order with Aaron Rogers and if I go ahead and update this tick box it's going to automatically pull through the details and I hit save And if I scroll down, we should see it. Cool, there it is. If I now click on this guy and I hit save, it's also going to update it to blank because it knows that, well, hey, this isn't um, an account, it is a contact. So if I change it back, it pulls it through. And then if, if the end user um, also decides to change it back to um, an account and they hit save and then they select the copy account address it is now going to pull through the address details fields and that's it Ta -da! Um, so again just to recap you can use entity and attribute mapping in CRM whether it's CRM 4 2011 or 2015 if you're using an older version um, I'm not really sure. Upgrade maybe? <laughs> no, I'm sure it should exist. Um, to copy the address details from your account or contact record into the order. And if if you don't create an order within an account or contact, then you can use other customization techniques. So what I did was I created custom fields and I created um, real-time workflows and I utilized business rules to ensure that the user can only ever select one address at a time and yeah that's it so I hope um, someone out there finds this useful and yeah uh, catch you next time bye